Hello, hello, hello. Hi, everybody. Just got a quick word for you today. Amen. Hallelujah. God is good all the time. Amen. And um, I just had to share with you this uh, word that I got this uh, just a few minutes ago. Um, I had heard that uh, Governor McMaster was opening retail stores. Hey, Dorothy, God bless you, my sister. So I heard that Governor McMaster was opening uh, retail stores and opening access to the beach. And um, then I see that some uh, local principalities are still keeping things closed down. And I said, I'm going to call this store out in Surfside. It's a store that I love to go to. And I thought, hey, maybe they're open. And uh, they answered and they said that they were going to be open on Thursday, which was good news. But the point of the matter is my heart. Hey there, Lisa. I don't know how you say your name, S-E-B, Seb, Seb, I don't know, but God bless you, my, my, my sister. Um, I'm just so excited, amen, because when they said they weren't open, I was disappointed, and you know, it didn't make me feel good, because I was hoping to go out there to the store. And immediately, I turned to my husband and I said, I need to hear the word. Now, I am so thankful that whenever my emotions uh, go negative, I know exactly what I need. Amen. And you know, the scripture says in Proverbs 13, 12, hope deferred makes the heart sick. But when thy desire comes, it's a tree of life. Listen, you know what? Our hope is not to be in the things of this world. Our hope is to be in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. And you'll never be disappointed. Amen. Glory to God. So I turned on Malcolm and I'm telling you that guy wasn't on 30 seconds and it just lit my fire. You know what it is? It's taking your attention off of this world onto the eternal kingdom. Amen. And you know, what did Jesus say? He says, all these things, riches and honor and glory and, and material things, the Gentiles seek. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. But the thing is, get your eyes on Jesus. Amen. I mean, just like that. I call, they're closed. I go, oh, bummer. I say, I need to hear the word. I turn Malcolm on. He starts speaking from uh, Luke 15 on the Good Shepherd. And within 30 seconds, my heart could care less whether that store opens again or not. It's irrelevant because now I'm in the zone, okay? In his presence is fullness of joy. That's what uh, Psalm 16 says. In his presence is fullness of joy. At his right hand, there are pleasures forevermore. I don't need nothing but Jesus. Nobody can do me like Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. So, hope thou in the Lord and you won't be disappointed. So, I was, I just, you know, Malcolm talked for, I gave him a couple of minutes, and then I silenced him. And I said to my husband, i got to make a video, because people have got to know, they've got to know that just like that, amen, just like that, glory to God. It's just like what James says. James says, to be a doer, uh, to be a doer of the word and not a hearer only. He says, the, 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 don't be like the man that looks in the mirror, sees what manner of man he is, and then straightway forgets. Listen, we got to know which side our bread is buttered on. Amen. We got to know our strength comes from the Lord. Amen. 
Glory to God. You know, Jesus says, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. Amen. He is what makes us strong. And you know, that's why the scripture says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with the wings of eagles. They'll run and not be weary. They'll walk and not faint. The young men ain't that way. They're going to they're gonna be faint. They're going to be weary. Because what the word of God is saying, it's not about your youth. It's not about uh, how strong you are physically. Let me tell you something, baby. I'm going to be 68 years old in July. And I feel like a million bucks. I mean, I feel so energetic. I feel so strengthened in the Lord. But you know what? I get out of that bed in the morning and I can just feel like a regular person. But when I start feeding on the word of God, it's like I am superhuman. And you know, the scripture says in John 1, it says, Jesus came to his own and his own received him not. But to as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God. That word receive is lumbano, to grab a hold of in order to make use of. Listen, I grab a hold of Jesus in order to make use of his life every day. Jesus is my life. Jesus is my strength. Amen. And I don't care what's going on around me. Amen. I am able to live above the circumstances. Glory to God. You can look at the things that are happening in this world. And just like it says in Luke 21, I think 26. Men's hearts will faint them for fear as they look at all these things that are going to come upon the whole inhabited earth. Amen. But we have got a choice. We can either look at that and get totally bummed out, or we can look at Jesus, the author and finisher of faith. The author of, and finisher of faith. You know, they put in, um, they put in thy faith. It's not thy faith, it's faith. He is the author of faith. He is the one that believed it and has transferred it to us by the power of the Holy Spirit so we can believe what God believes. That's the gospel. That's the gospel in, in 1 Corinthians 2. It says, it is written. That means Old Testament, baby. It is written, eye is not seen, ear is not heard. Neither has it been conceived in the heart of man. The things that God has in store for those that love him. But, and when you see the word but, it means disregard everything I just said. But God has, past tense, revealed it to us by his spirit. For what knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him. But we have not received the spirit of the world. We have received the spirit of God that we may freely know all things that God has for us. Do you hear what that's saying? Through the Holy Spirit, through the spirit of God that dwells on the inside of us, we can tap into the very heart of God and we can see what God has in store for us. And I'll tell you, just like Jeremiah said, the, the, the Lord said through the prophet Jeremiah to the children that were in captivity in Babylon. I mean, they had to be down, man. They had to be down feeling, oh, God's against us. But God gave them a good word. He says, I know the thoughts that I have towards you. They're thoughts of peace and goodness to bring you an expected end. Amen. Hallelujah. You know what? Jesus, when Jesus got into the boat and he said to his disciples, let's go to the other side. Listen, if Jesus says, let's get in the boat and go to the other side, it's because the father said to Jesus, get in the boat with the disciples and go to the other side. Because Jesus says, I don't do anything 
of myself, only what I see the Father do. Well, if the, if the Father said, get in the boat and go to the other side, guess what? You're going you're to get in the boat and you're going to go to the other side. And no matter what hell throws at you, you're going to get to the other side. And I got good news for you. Jesus is the ark. Amen. Glory to God. Just as Noah was a preacher of righteousness and he told everybody, get in the boat. I mean, they didn't even have to do anything. They didn't have to beat their breasts and say what a wretched sinner they were. They just had to get in the boat. They just had to believe the word of the prophet. <clears throat> the trouble was coming and they needed to get in the refuge, amen? But they didn't listen. And that's what Jesus is saying today. He's just saying, get in the boat. Get in Christ, amen? And if you're in Christ, honey, you're going to the other side. Hallelujah. Rejoice in that. Amen. You know, as Malcolm uh, turned to Luke 15, I opened my Bible and I looked. And he's speaking about the good shepherd. In verse 4, it says, What man of you, having a hundred sheep, if you lose one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after that which is lost until he find it? Listen to that. Until he find it. Hallelujah. Amen. Jesus is the ark. And you know what? Going back to the ark, you know, the scripture says that it was pitched within and without. And you know, we know that that pitch is tar. But if you look at that word pitched, it's atonement. Amen. Hallelujah. A beautiful picture and a type. All glory to God. And there wasn't one in that ark that was lost. Hallelujah. And so here it says, um, when he's found it, he lays it on his shoulders rejoicing. Glory to God. I mean, come on, kids. Get into this picture here. You know, this is the, the true picture of the Father's heart. Amen. I mean, we have not been, we've not been preached in the legalistic world, this heart of the Father. But it's more like beating sheep, saying sheep are stupid and beat them and grab them by the neck. That is not the picture that Jesus gave of the good shepherd. He said, when he finds that sheep, now that sheep went and wandered off. I mean, it, it, it just went and wandered off after something. Amen. And I can just imagine having pets, oh, dogs that would take off the minute you turn your back and go into the swamp and come back stinking and their fur is, is filled with burrs and you've got to take all it. Listen, Jesus he says, when the shepherd found that sheep, what did he do? He didn't tell it off. He didn't slap it. He didn't say it's stupid. He grabbed that sheep, dirt and all, burrs and all, and he put it around his neck. Oh, my goodness. That should make your heart sing. Because I don't care what we do. And we do some stupid things sometimes. Amen. We can, we can get ourselves in a jam, but you know what? The Lord will come and take you, and he'll speak those wonderful things right there in your ear. Amen. And tell you how special you are. Oh, glory to God. And then it says, it says, And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbors, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep, that was lost. He says, I say unto you that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth more than over 99 just persons which need no repentance. You know something? That used to trouble me. And the reason it troubled me is because I had the wrong interpretation of just and repentance. I used to see that as if you repent, oh, I'm a no good sinner. 
And then I used to see the just person, and I'm like, that doesn't need repentance. And it used to confuse me because the scripture says in Romans 3.23 that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There's none righteous, no, not one. So how can there be just persons that need no repentance? Well, the whole thing about repentance is it's a lousy translation because repentance comes from the Latin word of penance, which is, you know, to like Martin Luther used to lash his back until he passed out on the floor and read means keep doing it over and over again. And like he did that because he thought that it made God happy. My goodness gracious me, what kind of a father do we think we have that we would think that our father would be pleased in us pugilizing ourselves? I mean, that is some kind of sick, twisted mentality. Amen? If there was ever any earthly father that did that to their children, they'd put him in jail. And yet people accuse our lovely heavenly father of doing evil things to teach us a lesson. Oh my goodness, it's time for people to get a grip and listen to the truth. That sinner over one sinner that repented is all it is. We're lost. People are lost in this world because there's blindness that they cannot see. The scripture says in, I think it's, I think it's 1 Corinthians 4.4. 4. It might be 2 Corinthians 4.4. 4. Amen. Let me hear what Dorothy. The truth is so different from what I read in books year, years ago. It said that sometimes the shepherd had to break the legs. Let me say, break the lamb's leg in order to keep it from straying. Now that stinking thinking. Ain't it the truth? The garbage that we have been taught about our Heavenly Father. No wonder people don't want to come to God. When they have been uh, told that he's an ogre with a hammer that's about ready to crush him like a bug. Glory to God, our Heavenly Father. Listen, Jesus said, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Did we ever see Jesus? hurt anybody? Did we see Jesus make a person feel rotten? Listen, the only time that Jesus ever had a rebuke for anyone, it was because of the Pharisees putting condemnation and guilt on people. Thank you. God bless you. God bless his, my dear sister. Tommy, love you, girl. Amen. So anyway, uh, so is all it is to repent. Metanoia means change the way you think. Just change the way you think. I mean, there are people running from God because they're afraid of God because of what religion has taught them. And Jesus, through the power of the Holy Ghost, Jesus says, no man comes to me except my Father draw him to me. And he says, no man comes to the Father except through me. So, we have got to see that God is a loving father. He is not to be afraid of. He's got his arms out wide, and he is saying, come, come to me. I'm your refuge. Oh, come to me. I'll hide you in the cleft of the rock. Hallelujah. Jesus is the cleft of the rock. Glory to God. Oh, he loves us so much. He's saying, come home. Come home. Oh, I tell you, when, when I see people so afraid today, I'm like, there's nothing to be afraid of. Oh, my goodness. But you know what? It's, it's when you're grounded, when you're grounded in grace. You know, the scripture says it's a good thing that the heart be established in grace. You know, grace, charis, it is the divine influence of God upon the heart reflected in the life. Listen, as God's grace is upon my life today, I am being divinely influenced by my heavenly father that he loves me 
and that I have already died in Christ and there's no more death for me. Amen. As I said so many times, I might pop off out of this body, but you know what? As Paul said, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So I have no fear. I have no fear. The Lord is with me. He is a very present help in time of trouble. Listen, it's not words in a book. It is I have come to know the character of my heavenly father, that he loves me and he will take care of me. And my heart goes to rest in his love. First John says in first John four, perfect love casts out all fear. Perfect love, it's not my love for God. No way, it's his perfect love for me. Oh, glory to God, when I see when I see, oh my goodness, when I see through the eyes of Jesus, when I see people as Jesus sees people, my heart wells up with love. It's just like this morning when I called that star and said, are you open? And I said, oh, we plan on being open Thursday. And I, I was a little bummed, but I said, I need the word of God. You see, I know, I know what lifts me up. It's the word. And so, Back to this scripture in, in uh, Luke 15. He says, heaven rejoices when one sinner eyes open to see the truth that God's not mad at me. He loves me. And he'll go running after the good shepherd. Amen. Hallelujah. The scripture tells us, I believe it's in Colossians, uh, that we were um, enemies of God in our mind. In our mind. We were, God was never our enemy, but we thought he was because we thought that God was against us. But Jesus Christ came to reconcile the world back to himself, not imputing any trespasses and sins against us. And when he looks at you, he looks at you as innocent. Oh my goodness, hallelujah. You know what I love about Luke 15? You've got the good shepherd, you got the woman that lost the coin, and you got the father that runs out to meet the prodigal. You've got Father, Son, and Holy Spirit right here. Ah. The Holy Spirit is the woman, you know? And, and the scripture says in Proverbs that wisdom, it calls her a her. Hallelujah. You got Father, Son, and Holy Ghost working together for our salvation. Listen. It's a wonderful thing when you know that the Lord is a very present help in time of trouble. I mean, I'm not, I'm not going to feel stinking. I am not going to feel lousy. The moment that my emotions go south, I need the Lord. Amen. Because I tell you, I'm addicted. I'm addicted to life. I'm addicted to joy. You know, the scripture says, I think it's Romans 17, 14 or 14, 17. I don't know. But it says the kingdom of God is not meat and drink, but it's righteousness, joy, and peace in the Holy Ghost. I mean, that is the kingdom of God. And when you're caught up into that kingdom, when that is your reality, you cannot help but feel joy and peace in the Holy Ghost. And that's where I live. That is just where I live because I don't like feeling lousy. I don't like feeling fearful. I don't like feeling depressed. I did that for years. Before I knew the Lord, I'm telling you, you want to see a person who suffered from depression, who was 
just an absolute mess, you're looking at her. But you know what? I spent my days in darkness, and I have been translated from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his beloved son, and I don't want anything to do with it. Amen. Listen to this scripture. There's two scriptures that the Lord gave me this morning as uh, I had my experience. Uh, Psalm 9, 9 says, The Lord also will be a refuge for the oppressed. Well, I can't really say that I was oppressed. <laughs> okay. Oppressed, depressed. No, I was just bummed because the store wasn't open. Okay. But it says, A refuge in times of trouble. And they, this is the key now, okay? They that know thy name will put their trust in thee. Those that know thy name, you know the name represents the character of a person, okay? When you know the character of a person, that they are faithful, you can put your trust in them. Amen. And Jesus came to reveal the character of the Father. He said in his priestly prayer in John 17, Father, I have declared thy name unto them. Thy name, thy character. Amen. What you saw in Jesus is what is in the Father. And it says those that know, that's to be intimately acquainted with experientially to know they will put their trust in thee for thou Lord hath not forsaken them that seek thee oh my goodness you know you see that you see why Jesus came to sanctify the name of the father he says because those that know your name will put their trust in you, okay? They will come, the scripture says in Hebrews, to come boldly to the throne of grace, to obtain uh, mercy and grace in time of need. I think it says that. But you know what? If you don't know the goodness of your heavenly father, if you don't know he's for you and not against you, you're not going to come running to him. You're going to run away from him. So it's so important that we know the true character and nature of God. And then this scripture. This is one of my favorites. In uh, Psalm 3, no, Psalm 4, 7, it says, um, it's David. He says, there be many that say, who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Oh my goodness, you know, in his light, there is light. Hallelujah. It says, thou has put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine is increased. Okay? He's in trouble. He, that psalm starts out, Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. So, He's not in a good place, naturally, okay? But he calls out to God, and God brings him into the God zone where he can see things like God sees things. And he says, Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine is increased. He's saying, Listen, I am so happy. It's like the harvest is over, all the labor is over, and I'm just kicked back, and everything's done, and I'm just so happy, I'm at rest. He, in the time of trouble, see, it doesn't make any difference what the circumstances are around you. 
Glory to God, you could be surrounded by contradictory circumstances that are speaking to you saying, oh, look at this. Oh, what's going to happen here? What's going to happen there? And you know what? When you turn your eyes upon Jesus and look full in his wonderful face, the things of this earth will grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace. Because you see, through, through the power of the Holy Spirit, God can bring you into his reality. And his reality is an eternal kingdom. <laughs> of his kingdom, there is no end. Hallelujah. That's why the David could say in Psalm 46, I will not fear though the earth be removed and the mountains fall into the sea. For there is a river in the city of God and he makes you glad oh glory to God hallelujah oh to be able to understand what David said when he said <clears throat> he prepares a table before me in the presence of my enemies the whole world can be nattering negative negative things and you can sit there and rejoice in the Lord your God because you know what? The kingdoms of this world will fail. They will fail. We know that every kingdom that was has failed and every kingdom will fail. But the kingdom of God will never end. Oh my goodness, I'll tell you something. I get so happy when I think about the kingdom of God and I feed on the bread of life. Oh my goodness. Hey, Natisha, God bless you, sweetheart. You know, uh, it's a glorious, glorious thing to be living in the kingdom of God when there's trouble all around you. But you know that Christ is in you and you are in him and we're in God. We are cocooned. Amen. Hallelujah. We are cocooned in the love of God. Oh, there is, there's nothing like the peace that only the Prince of Peace can give you. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, kids, it's a glorious day today in the neighborhood. And I'm just waiting for my honey to come home so we can do our bike ride. But may the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you with, you know, I heard Greg. I was listening to Greg yesterday. And, uh, he said, you know, is all you need is one word. You just need the Lord to speak one word to you. You know, and it can be something so simple, but it will pull you right out into God reality. Amen. It's all about perspective. Jesus said, if your eye be single, and, and the root word of that word single is rafa, which means physician which means health. We need our eyes, our perspective, the eyes of our heart to be healed so that we can see as God sees. Listen, do you think God has a bad day? Do you think he ever has a day where he feels bummed out? No way, okay? And so he said, he says, your thoughts are not my thoughts, saith the Lord. Your ways are not my ways. But, and I hear that quoted all the time by Christians like, we can't know the mind of God. And yet, when you back up a little, I think it's verse 7, he's speaking to the unrighteous. Well, how do you think the thoughts of an unrighteous man are? Oh, God hates me. God's against me. And he's like, hey, Bubba Lou, huh? Your thoughts are not my thoughts. 
My thoughts towards you are good. I love you and I want to bring you to an expected end. And so when our thoughts become braided together with God's thoughts and we think about situations the way God thinks about situations, you're going to be having a good day just like Jesus. Amen. Well, kids, I hope this blessed you. It's blessed me. Uh, have a great day.